Today, we're going to be talking about our favorite dragons and their riders from season one of House of the Dragon. Now, this listicle won't be as analytical as our previous ones because it's more for personal fun than a deep dive, but we'll do our best to sprinkle in some reasoning along with our own personal biases. We're trying to take into account skill of the rider, the dragon's power, the bond between rider and dragon, and how important they'll be in the upcoming Dance of Dragons. We're also shooting for no spoilers, so we're only addressing dragon and rider pairs who appeared in season one, so people only watching the show can enjoy the twists and turns that are no doubt on their way, and just in case they stay very faithful to the big plot points of fire and blood. So try not to ruin things for people in the comments, guys. If they want to know, they'll ask or they'll go look it up themselves. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's start flying, Tom. So the other dragons and their riders who don't make this list are little bitches in our eyes and footnotes for the upcoming conflict, especially Aegon and Sunfire. God, I hate that little twerp and his little bitch of a dragon so fucking much. But we do want to give a shout out to Vermifor. He would have made the list handily, but as of season one, he's still unclaimed and obviously we're avoiding spoilers. But whoever does earn the loyalty of this dragon equivalent of a grumpy old man will no doubt be one of the most fearsome riders of the whole series. Dreamfire's also cool since it's her who is suspected to be the actual mother of Danny's dragons in Thrones, and of course the fan favourite Cannibal gets an honourable mention, as like Vermifor, he's also badass, but he's a wild dragon with no rider. Anyway, on with the list. At number 5, we've got Laenor Velaryon and Sea Smoke. Laenor and Sea Smoke got to be held among our favourites simply by the virtue of us seeing them melting the crab feeders' men. A most welcome sight. While not a big scary motherfucker like Vermifor or Vagar, Sea Smoke is known to be way more nimble, and despite being young, a great fighting dragon. Laenor is clearly a good rider, and Sea Smoke is clearly fearsome, giving absolutely no shits for the archers that threatened them and toasting them along with the rest. The pair clearly have balls and a good bond. It's honestly a shame that Lainor faked his death, as it will likely mean that Sea Smoke sits out a good chunk of the dance unless a certain Dragon Seed bastard gets their hands on him, as dragons usually don't end their bond with their rider until the rider's death. Nevertheless, despite being on the smaller end, Sea Smoke is one of the better fighting dragons, and getting him into the field should be high on Team Black's list of priorities for Season 2. Why don't we try and claim him, Tom? You go first. I'm, I'm right behind you, promise. If you have differing thoughts that we must hear, feel free to pop on over to our Discord. It's the best place to make video suggestions we'll definitely see. We're also looking to do a Q&A in the future, as well as a lightning round of versus fights. So if you want to ask us anything and get an answer, the server is the best place to be. At number four, we've got Rhaenyra Targaryen and Cyrax. Now, we never got to see Cyrax in proper action in season one, but her and Rhaenyra won us over with the incredibly strong bond they have, as shown in moments where it's clear Rhaenyra's emotions are reflecting in Cyrax, and the way Rhaenyra can actually keep Cyrax calm and under control more so than any other rider has thus far demonstrated. She's also one of the only dragons that's still laying eggs, making her importance to the survival of her species rather pivotal, though I don't think it's really spoilers to say that that, that doesn't quite work out in the long run. Nevertheless, both Dragon and Rider are pivotal players for the upcoming dance, since, you know, the Rider is the reason the war is being fought in the first place, making Rhaenyra and Cyrax both figureheads for the Black's cause despite their lack of battle prowess. For number three, it's Rhaenys Targaryen with Maelys. Rhaenys and Maelys got our attention from one scene. We all know the scene. So much so that Tom doesn't even have to show the scene for you to know the scene. Rainey's by herself is so boss. You haven't seen it in the show yet, but she's basically the answer to the question, what if Olena Redwine slash Tyrell was a warrior and also had a dragon? And her bond with Maelys is incredibly strong. I know Maelys helped herself to a little bit of peasant during Aegon's crowning, but Rainey's must have had some serious influence over the Red Queen to have prevented her from partaking in the defenseless, all-you-can-eat green buffet that was basically laid out on a platter to her. Could you have a imagined Caraxes in that situation. The dragon's word of the day would have been nom. 
Melee's is also an incredibly important dragon for Team Black, as along with one other, the Red Queen is one of the only dragons big enough to toe-to-toe -to -toe with Team Green's most deadliest weapon, with anything resembling a chance. Which is a great segue to our number two pick, and it's the pirate and uncle wannabe Amond and his monster Vagar the only dragon and rider from Team Green that made the list. Because, let's be honest, they are the only ones who are worth considering when it comes to importance on the game board. Amond and his giant lizard companion better have some big shoulders, because they are basically carrying their entire team. Amond and Vagar are basically the Gregor Clegane of the sky. Amond isn't as skilled a rider as he is a warrior, and his bond with Vagar can't really be argued to be the strongest either, since his dragon's refusal to obey his commands is the incident that provokes the drastic escalation of conflict during the dance. But the pair have the distinction of being the biggest, meanest bully in the yard. It doesn't really matter how skilled a rider Amond is, or how well bonded they are, if Vagar can basically chomp other dragons into two pieces with a single bite when they start pissing her off. But what makes Amond and Vagar so intriguing and attention-worthy is the fact they are basically the big boss for the Blacks to overcome. It's killing Vagar. I cannot face that hoary old bitch alone. Seriously, fuck Aegon and his little bitch Sunfire. I hate them! Much like Gregor Clegane, we know no one is bigger or more savage, and thus we are rooting for an underdog to prevail against them. Which leads perfectly to our number one, and with no personal bias whatsoever, it's of course Daemon Targaryen and Caraxes. So, points for Daemon himself just being a total badass who can murder his wife in cold blood, betray his brother several times, groom and then marry his very young niece, and still somehow remain the most liked character in the show. That's what happens when you put Matt Smith in the role, who obviously put all of his XP points into charisma. I mean, how else do you explain it? But Daemon doesn't carry the duo. Caraxes, while not the biggest dragon, is one of the most feared and fearsome beasts in the realm, and isn't afraid of… well, anything by the looks of it. Daemon and Caraxes also have an incredibly strong bond. The giant red bastard always seems to have Daemon's back, more so than any other dragon does for their rider, whether on the field of battle or if Daemon just wants to intimidate people. Caraxes is always on standby, ready to emerge from round the corner in moments so epic you'd think that Daemon and his red friend had planned it five minutes beforehand. The pair also have considerable battle experience together during the multi-year campaign of the Stepstones, and you can't put Put a price on that, especially when compared to Amon's lack of control in tense situations. But what truly makes them are, and I'm going to take a stab and guess you, the viewers, favourite dragon slash rider duo, is the fact they are that underdog that's going to have to tussle with Amon and his monstrous… um, monster. Team Black has way more dragons than Team Green, but what makes the dance so exciting is that Team Green has the one dragon that truly counts. Vagar is a menace, and none of Team Black's dragons can hold a candle to the last living dragon from Aegon's conquest. None except Daemon and Caraxes. He is the only rider with the skill in battle who has the only dragon that, despite being considerably smaller, is enough of a savage like his rider to try and take on unfavourable, bordering on impossible odds, with the confidence to win. And we just love both of them for it. And that's our take. Don't worry guys, we will do some more in-depth and analytical vids for House of the Dragon in future, but we just wanted something nice, light, easy and fun to ease us into the Hot D era. Which dragon and their rider is your favourite and why? Though I'm pretty sure I can guess 99% of your guys' choices. 